for joining me again. I hope you've enjoyed the show. When I left you for commercial break, I was talking about the python hunt that's been going on for about two weeks here in the state. Uh, the python problem's terrible here. We don't know how many we have. We know we can't get rid of them. We've got to control the population. These things propagate big time. They're having sex, they're having babies, and they grow up to 17, 18 feet in length. Got musk and they're eating everything. It's not that they're eating the humans. We're not concerned for the humans so far. We are concerned for the rats that are out there in the Everglades, uh, the fish, these things go in the water and swim, uh, our, our deer, our little deer, anything that's out there, possum, I don't know what it is, any animal out there, they're eating everything. And that's going to affect the ecology. Everything's going to get followed up. So they, they, the state said one month, you can go out and kill them. We're going to have a bounty hunt. We'll pay you for how many you get, you kill, and how many, uh, and the biggest one. 1,300 hunters are out there as of last Wednesday. We know because they have to be permitted to go on this hunt. Okay, It's free, but you've got to be signed up. 1,300 hunters, and guess how many they've gotten so far they've killed? 27 pythons. 27 pythons in two weeks, only two more weeks to go. I think this is the stupidest thing I've heard of, and I'll tell you why. you got a bunch of maniacs out of there, people with guns. Some don't know how to use them. Most may know how to use them, but they're out there shooting in the wilderness. They're going to shoot each other. Somebody's going to end up getting killed, I'm afraid, or hurt. Uh, this reminds me, as I said last week, of Jaws. Remember the movie Jaws? Once there was a $25,000 bounty or $10,000 bounty, <coughs> excuse me, put on uh, whoever, whoever on the head of that shark, whoever killed it, would get that money. They all went out the next morning, 12 guys in a rowboat. They were tipping over. They're drinking, having a good time, and they're going to shoot the shark. It's stupid. Well, it's gotten a little worse, I think. So, uh, first of all, the state said, if you can, please shoot the python in the head because it will die instantly. We don't want the poor animal to suffer. Right? Some now have found it's easier to catch them with their bare hands. The hunters use their bare hands as opposed to the gun. The pythons bite. Their bites, because of the size of their teeth, are not bad, and they're not poisonous. And you may have to go to the hospital to get a so one sewed. Most of you can take care of yourself with iodine, mercuricum, or what have you at home. So the hunters are finding it's easier to catch them live and bring them in. Uh, we don't know how many have been caught this way. Uh, they are being taken because they are, we want to kill them, but they're an endangered species. Does this make sense to you? The state of Florida says they are an endangered species also. So the ones that are alive are being taken someplace else in the Everglades and deposited. The inconsistency of the government. Uh, they say these pythons would not harm a, a human being other than the little bites. Well, about three months ago they caught a python and they slid it open to see what was inside. And guess what? There was a 75 pound whole deer. The py see, the pythons catch their, their victim and squeeze them. They wrap around the victim, squeeze the victim to death, then swallow the victim whole. Swallow the 75 pound uh, deer, and that, that'll take them a couple of months to digest. If it can be a 75-pound deer, why can't it be a 125-pound man or a 150-pound man? And we really don't know how big these pythons are because the biggest we ever caught was 17 feet. So I, I just think this whole thing was stupid to start. It's really not going to come out with any benefit. Uh, I don't care if they kill 100 of them, 200. They're there. They don't know. They describe it as tens of thousands. But that's your Python hunt update for today. Let's go to this day in history, January 25th. January 25th in history. I have to tell you something. This is probably the first time I've, I've ever said this. I really couldn't find that many things that happened on January 25th that would be of interest. I found two items, and I'll share them with you in a moment. I go back generally to 400 B.C., and I come up with eight or ten things that I think are exciting. January 25th, calm day. Nothing significant really has ever happened on this day, except the two items I'm going to share with you. In 1924, 
The first Winter Olympics, that's important, the first Winter Olympics, was held in Chamonix, France. Now, I share this with you, though I'm not a skier, is because I was in Chamonix for two days uh, this past summer, you recall, on that long trip I took. Uh, Chamonix is just on the other side of the Italian border. It sits about halfway up Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain in the Alps. And the rest of the mountain is huge. You look up and it's big. I mean, it's like looking at God. It's that big. And I was impressed and I could see how it'd be ski country in the winter. I was there in the middle of August. I got up one morning <laughs> and I opened the door, you know, to get a breath of fresh air from my chalet. And it was snowing outside in the middle of August. And it was snowing heavy. In fact, Everything was covered with snow. The day before, it was in the 80s, the temperature, our temperature. It occasionally happens, I was told. I went for a walk, and I saw a thermometer that had the way you read centigrade, whatever they do, I think it's centigrade in France, in Italy, the temperature, and they had it Fahrenheit. It was 27 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of August. Uh, the snow was all gone the next day, but that's the way it is in Chamonix, very pretty place. And that's where the first Winter Olympics were held. This may be a very important day. In 2011, just yesterday, for all wants and purposes, the Egyptian Revolution began. We all know the Egyptian Revolution. The people went out in the streets in Cairo and Alexandria, Terran, Terran Square. The women demonstrated also. They were primarily young people between 18 and 30 college educated who couldn't get jobs, couldn't earn a living, and women, women who wanted to be liberated from the chains of, Muslim, of the Muslim religion, which kept their bodies covered, which prevented them from, they had to walk behind the man, they had trouble getting jobs. Uh, it was going to be a new world. So they got rid of Mubarak, which I thought was wrong at the time, our government immediately and for this, I chastise, even though I'm impressed with her and I would support her for president, I chastise uh, Hillary Clinton because she went on TV and says, this is wonderful, we've got to support democracy. And I, at the time, with this little show, was saying, we know what we got in Mubarak. He's a friend of Israel also. He keeps Iran at bay. They're afraid of him. Uh, what are we doing? We know what we got. Don't change. No, Mubarak had to go and he went. And they put him on trial. The guy, poor guy had a heart attack. They tried him on a stretcher. Now he's going to get a new trial. He's still in jail for two years. And Egyptian has a radical Muslim government. Can't be disputed the terminology I use. They don't, just don't have a Muslim government. I would expect it. They're a Muslim country. But it's the radical fringe, the very religious fringe, the Ayatollahs that are, are controlling the Egyptian government. Uh, but this day in history, we had the Egyptian Revolution. What I'm about to share with you, I got from my good friend, Sean Kinney. Sean Kinney is a local reporter in Key West. He's one of the nicest guys you would ever meet. Uh, he writes for the Keynoter, which is a weekly newspaper here, but it is a newspaper. It has news, and it has little bits of things that are important. Sean recently wrote, and I give him full credit for this. It was so good, I asked him, I said, can I talk about it on my show? Just to show you how things have changed. In 1928, now remember, we didn't get, the airplane wasn't discovered until 1903. In 1928, Imperial Airways, in order to fly from England to Australia, the plane started in Southampton, went to Marseille, went to Rome, then to Athens, Alexandria, Baghdad, Karachi, then to Calcutta, Rangoon, Bangkok, Singapore, and finally stopped in Sydney, Australia, six days later. Isn't that amazing? Now it'll take us, you know, same trip would take you 12 to 15 hours, six full days. Thank you, Sean, for that tidbit. I'm happy to share it with you. We're coming to the end of this week's show. That's why I was talking a little bit fast. I've enjoyed doing the show with you again this week. Uh, I thank you for joining me. If you're not in Key West, come to Key West. We still have good weather. It's about 75, 77 by night. Our evenings are getting cool, 65, 67. But it's still great weather. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to being with you next week.